Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with John. Hey, how are you, Rob? I am hanging in. Actually, I'm wearing my uh, buddy's t-shirt. He didn't have merch, so I'm like, I'm going to make a shirt for you. So I put his face. Oh, wow. It's pretty fancy. It felt like milk. It, it could have went really creepy because I just posted it on Facebook and tagged him. And it could have been like, if we didn't have like a good relationship, he would have been like, you got my face on a shirt. Like, you ever hear the <laughs> stories of like, oh, they're best friends or something. And then you watch a movie. Sometimes like there's that really, they always talk about the really clingy person that like sends flowers to their work. That can be good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you actually like the person or not. Like if somebody sends you flowers, you don't like them. It's like, yeah. yo. They're going to kidnap my pets. They're going to take everything I've ever loved away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, on uh, one of my podcasts, I was talking with some of my other uh, personalities, and we actually talked about some of the things we do in lottery. And one of the things I said was uh, we would send a mold of our buttholes in chocolate to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, we get a little out of control, you know, but... Uh, I always thought that'd be nice. You know, it's better than some of the other ideas we've kind of shot out from here to there, you know? Okay, but if it's made of chocolate, are you going to refuse a chocolate but whole be 100% honest? I'm going to be honest. Unless it's got a good filling, I'm probably out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just saying, look, some candy actually tastes like ass, but if it looks like ass and it tastes good, I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. So when you were a kid, did you ever have that, like, that soap gum? Like, you see those little... uh nickel and quarter machines i don't know i don't know what you have but for some reason up here in toronto they like to have these like 25 cent like gum machines and they had like these soap gums and everybody would chew on it and hate it and complain about it but they would still get it like it's so weird and it was like for the longest time up until probably about five years ago you could still find this in any local store it's like the weirdest tasting gum ever you know what I miss is the little candy cigarettes they used to give out, like the little chalk ones. Like they weren't the oh, best. Man. Yeah, they weren't the best tasting ones. But like here, like they had like comic book characters on them and stuff. But you would get them in these packs, like the Incredible Hulk pack. And then you tap it two times on your hand like you were smoking a cigarette and you get it out. And then you'd be sitting out in front of the store like, like a cool <laughs> kid. And it's like you look back on it like, oh, my God, like you were basically endorsing smoking. But people would like – they just canceled that candy because it's like kids are going to be prone to smoking because of it. I'm like, that's not true. Cause let me tell you something. I've eaten plenty of Swedish fish and I have never once wanted to go turn a fish into fucking rubber and then chew on it. It has never <laughs> happened in my history. I'd never even heard of the Swedish fish. I've heard of Swedish berries, but never Swedish fish. What is it's, the sweetest, the sweetest fish? I feel like I'm missing out here. You know what Juji fruits is? No. Okay, so they're like really old gummy candy like that old people would get. And it's weird that you would like correlate gummy with old people because you would think they wouldn't want that because it's too chewy for their mouth. Yeah. These candies, my grandpa gave me the best advice. I used to get snow caps, which are little chocolate things with frosted sugar on top yes. of them. Yes, I used yes. to kill them in a minute before the previews even started. He goes, next <laughs> time, get juji fruits. I'm like, why juji fruits? That sounds like I'll be in pain. And yeah. he's like – because you'll be picking it out of your teeth the whole oh. length of the movie. Dude, I finished a quarter of that box and I took the rest home and I was eating that for like snacks for like a week afterwards. Because <laughs> you get one of those suckers in your tooth and you're sitting there going through trying to get it out. Like, how do I? Well, it's like, but then the worst candy in the world is whoopers or whoppers, whatever the hell whoppers, those. Whoppers, the chocolate. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. You want to talk about biting into like a foam ball. That's just nothing but hollow dust on the inside. You, you The first thing you think it's always oh, going to be chocolate and you bite into it. And then it's just chalk. And you're like, yeah. my teeth like hurt. Like it hurt when I did that. Like my soul, everything that is involved in this transaction <laughs> is terminated. Oh man. You know, it's better than the cinnamon challenge. I don't know what challenges you've heard on the internet, but there's mm -hmm. a cinnamon challenge where these guys have like a, the spoons with cinnamon and they try to like swallow it dry. And then uh, what do you got? The tide, the tide challenge. The reason why nobody could buy fucking Tide Pods without an ID or something. That happened when I went to Walmart. I got – they had – when they had Tide Pods locked in a case, and then I picked up um some cold medicine, some like DayQuil or NyQuil or whatever it was because I was like I had a stuffy nose, and you know I was going to try some NyQuil. And the woman at Walmart was like – needed my ID to buy it. 
And I'm like, why do I, why do I need my ID? And she's like, because you can make meth out of it. And I'm like, oh, it makes sense. You have to, <laughs> you have to make. That's exactly what most people are thinking about. <laughs> I know. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, it makes sense. You probably would have to have a limit on the number of these you can buy. And I was like, but how did you know you can make meth out of it? She goes, I used to make meth out of it all the time. And I'm like, looking at her, and I'm like, oh, uh, shit. Whoa. Oh, and, and she was like, yeah. Before I got a job at Walmart, I was a big user. I was like, okay. Like, and you start Nothing to realize. Wrong. How you start to realize how your at least my town, for instance, it seems like I, this is how I know the cops are doing a really good job. It's because my town seems really nice and touristy, but then like I started being friends with police officers, and they were telling me all the bad shit I never hear about, and I'm like, oh my god, my town is horrible. There's bums, there's addicts, there's everything all over the place. Because yeah. I just had uh, my buddy the other day come into my work. Um, I work at a gym, so he was coming to work out, and he shows okay. me a video. He goes, "Yeah, one of the cops got ringed out because he didn't check the girl properly." I'm like, "What do you mean check her?" And he shows me a video of this girl. He's filming it on the security camera. She just pulls out cocaine out of her bra and starts doing it in the cell, and I'm like. I didn't know this was a thing down here. Like, how bad are you arresting people like this every night? He goes, dude, I countless of them every single night. And I'm like, well, good on you because I don't come in contact with any of these folk. You know, I guess it's better that it came out of her bra because I've heard instances where it goes right into the uh, the stink wrinkles and then they pull it out later. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have an item in your head that if you're going to be arrested for that you would shove up there just on the concept of you don't want anybody to find it? I have nothing I love that much, not even my phone. Like I'll take a break from Dragon City to do my time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm not that worried about it. Listen, I don't want nothing up there, including when you have to go get your physical when you're 40 and they stick that uh... – what do you call it? The metal snake up there to make sure everything's swimming around. Okay. I'm out every day when it comes to sticking anything up there. <laughs> I feel like if they just gave you like a little pill and like when you do a colonoscopy and then you wake up from it, you don't really know what happened. Are you still hurt by it? Like, are you still feeling violated or you're like, it didn't even happen in my mind. I think, I think you're still hurt. Like, I mean, obviously I don't have any experience. I, I mean, eventually we all have that experience, but uh Wow, you know, yeah, I, I feel like you're still going to go home and uh, feel the shame, you know what I mean? But uh, talking about that, there was something that happened in New York not too long ago. Um, apparently a prostate, a guy was getting his prostate checked. And because of where the G spot is on a dude, when it happened and the doctor checked this guy out, he ejaculated when he was check being checked out. And apparently that's a common problem. And he went to his car and came back and killed someone. I was like, what in God's green earth is going on here? It's there's like, I get it. It's very strange. You, like no one knows how to deal with their feelings, but like, you know, I guess getting older has its, uh, it's why, negative. Why did he kill somebody that doesn't make, I, I got, I had an orgasm and I just decided to start on my killing spree right then. Maybe it was just that it wasn't who he picked for it. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't what he had selected in his mind for his first time in that regard. <laughs> That's like that. There was a old show back on the day, like television. And it was, uh, it was an interview show where they always had like people come on and say like, it's like a Jerry Springer. Like this is, you know, I loved you all this time. And you know, then they oh, get your crap. reaction of like the person and the one dude was on there and a guy came up, he goes, I've always loved you. And it's like, he wasn't expecting it to be a dude. Like he thought it was going to be some girl that he was talking to and they actually yeah. catfished him. Well, that show got canceled after that episode because that guy went to that dude's house and shot him in the face. Oh crap. I, I can see that happening. Everybody just like, especially on TV, I guess, um, you know, like when you figured out, you got catfished. I can see a lot of people just going bananas and losing their mind because for some reason the ego is always, always bigger than like, the rational explanation or just being like okay you got me kind of thing right well wow. that's a whole tv series now it's called catfish and it's literally yeah. just people they go and find the people that are catfishing and stuff like that and it's really weird because like i watched it the other day just like honestly i think what needs to come back is reality television because i feel like if we had more of that in the world then maybe people would be less prone to try and make it into their actual life like how many people do you come across like in a store that just start acting out like they're being filmed on camera or something like <laughs> you took my cornflakes and then they just start like ah and they start breaking you're like what the fuck like calm down like what are you doing this is ridiculous this is not it's not mtv so i was watching catfish and they they uh there's a chance that the person sometimes likes who the catfish is. It's really freaking weird. And there was an episode I was watching. The 
the girls like I this guy's not you know he never shows his whole face I feel like he's ugly or something like that he only goes by this profile or this alias and the next thing you know they meet the kid looks like that he kind of did in the picture just a little bit like kind of had part of his face covered up like his eyes were only showing or something like if he was wearing a mask yeah. and then you see the lower part of his face and everything and it's like burned or something she's like I still like him though like I'll still date him and then they went on a date and got married and I'm like so what? It's not all bad. I, I no. guess not. It's like before the 90 days, like that show got uh, real popular. Uh, I, you know what? I kind of disagree with the whole uh, reality TV. I think, uh, I mean, a lot of it, I think everybody knows is kind of like um, they have their bullet points and they're kind of like facilitating or fi uh, filling in the stuff that they want to have happen on the show. Because obviously, if there's no drama, nobody's going to be interested, right? Yeah, and but without that drama, the people create that in their everyday life, and that's an issue. 100%. I feel like there should be more uh, reality shows of people at work. So like, you know, like have like a GoPro, almost like a parrot on your shoulder, you know what I mean? Just watching you go down the street. Like if you're a snowplow, how many guys you see doing stupid shit in front of your vehicle? You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. I couldn't imagine the amount of swear words that come out of everybody's mouth. Sanitation workers, like picking up dead animals. I seen this one actually. So long story short, but short story long. Uh, I watched a guy hit a, a bunny in my neighborhood. It sat there. It was garbage day. And I just let, I just let it be. It was on the street. I was like, whatever. So anyways, the sanitation worker came, he picked up my garbage bags. He threw it in and he goes, Oh, look at this. And he picked it up and he went to throw it. And it was like cardboard and it was like doing this weird, like lopsy thing. And then he brought down the whole, yeah, it was very morbid, but it was kind of funny at the same sense, just watching it kind of like flip flop. It was almost like a cartoon. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. Wait, you yeah, watched him kill a rabbit? I watched, no, I watched somebody else kill the rabbit, and then I watched the sanitation worker later come up and just decide he wanted to throw it in the back of the garbage truck anyways. Should have hunted that dude down that killed the rabbit. <laughs> he was going way too fast. I didn't, I didn't have my vehicle ready or my keys for that matter. You had me thinking of a really good sales pitch for a TV show. So maybe if we just use the homeless people, we paid them like $5, $10 a day or something just to walk around with the GoPro. And it's like you get to observe the – because here's the thing. People in the world, I feel like, do not – are not their true selves when they go out into public. You know, you're always like a gussied up, more straightened or sometimes loosened version of yourself depending on how your day is going. Sometimes you run into the Karen or you run into someone that does – tend to snap on the i am a, is it is the other one i believe it's it's called a karen and a john i hope it's not because that'd be terrible i feel like it should be a kevin like you, you gotta keep it in the k's you know what i mean like it's a karen or a kevin yeah but then if you add another kkk it turns into a whole oh, shit. yeah Woo! exactly I know it every day <laughs> you got you got you to gotta steer clear from that one or you get canceled. Um, <laughs> but if you go – like usually some people are like the screws loose and they're out in the public and they're just going to release it out onto the world because they just need to do that. And there's the people that are trying their best to keep it straight until they get home where they can freak out. So I'm like if you just give it to a camera or GoPro to a uh, homeless person, they – nobody is going to try and keep themselves straight. Or keep themselves perfect or this idea of what we want them to be in front of a homeless person because they already don't care about that person. So it's like you would see people in the craziest thing like a dude be picking his nose in, middle, in front of a homeless guy not care. Wipe it on the homeless guy and a homeless Aww. guy should be filming it. You would get like secret footage of the real world of people doing their – in their natural habitats like one of those nature documentaries. <laughs> I think they already have it. They call it the people of Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Walmart yeah. is pretty intense, man. I'm not gonna lie. I, I find it funny, like some of the stuff that people decide to wear. And I think this is where the GoPro would be good in terms of uh you know seeing real life for what it's worth. So, like I've seen a lot of these videos, and I and like a, I'm like a deer stuck in headlights. I have to continue watching it because I feel like I'm gonna miss something, even though like when I go to Walmart, I see those people in their pajama bottoms and like their um halter tops or um uh undershirts or you know like the dirty like like they have like their barbecue sauce the night before or maybe they're in the middle of barbecuing or whatever the hell they're doing I've, I've seen this stuff in real life and i feel like um I, I would love to be able to grab a gopro and just stop them like what happened to you today and just watch the reaction and be like uh what do you mean and be like well you know you're wearing a white beater a pair of like thong sandals and uh a pair of uh long johns so like i just want to know what happened to you today that you couldn't get dressed or maybe have a shower
<laughs> you know what I mean? That's the Johnny Depp confidence where you just don't care anymore. You just walk into a store acting like, I don't really care what people think of me. I'm not going to meet these people five minutes from now. I give it some respect to it, but like I went into Walmart the other day and they had a person working there that was covered in tattoos, like face tattoos, eye tattoos. That was the scary part for me. It's like, if you didn't have the eye tattoos, I was like, all right, it's, I wouldn't even notice it really. But he had the eye tattoos and it was just so intense where I was like, yeah, the only job you probably could get like that is working at Walmart. But like, nicest dude, but it's it was just, it was so extreme where I was just like, the people, like what goes into a mind of a person to want to sit there and get a needle onto their eye to get it tattooed? I mean, I guess he would be a good bouncer, maybe even <laughs> give you that intimidation factor. contract killer or something, maybe. <laughs> well, you know, I always find it funny when you see guys try to copy like famous tattoos. So, I mean, you have the rocks tattoo and I see a bunch of guys that try to go to tattoo parlors to get that. I've seen the Mike Tyson tattoo and the Mike Tyson tattoo. I just kind of look at dudes and I'm like, I have to wonder really what's going through your head. Like Mike Tyson is a unique dude. He's uh he's the one he's a one man show like this guy will knock you out, and then I see this next guy that has it and he's got like toothpick for arms and toothpicks for legs and I'm just like I don't know I don't think he quite fit the bill like he's the baddest man on the planet he can have those tattoos you might be the biggest eater in the house I don't know like I don't see the similarities you know it's, I mean? it's crazy because even with Mike Tyson you'll look at him and you'll be like yeah like I would say something about the face tattoo but I just. I know you're going to knock me out. So I'll just keep my mouth shut. But if you see a regular person, that's like really, really like scrawny and has a face tattoo, you're like, that's a bold freaking move, dude. You got to either be like the coolest dude in the world, or you are got to be like the funniest person because there's no way like that. You got to live up to with that tattoo and stuff. And the weird part about Mike Tyson is, is like, what really scared me was I started looking at all his old interviews. Have you seen any of his old fight interviews? I've seen a couple, but I, nothing I can recall right at the top, off the top of my head. Bro, let me tell you something. That's a psychopath. I mean, in a good way. Like, he's an intense, insane fighter. And he was hypnotized, all that, by his coach to become this insane fighter. But his there's one fight interview. He's going against somebody. And he's like, how do you feel? He goes, I am God. He goes, I praise be to the Lord. And he's like going off. And you're like, oh, my God. Like, if this is a priest, that's okay. But not when it's just a boxer talking about the Lord like this. And he goes, I want to eat his heart. I want to eat his children. He's talking about his fighter. And I'm like, <laughs> at any point, are we going to, like, check his urine for, like, anything? Anything like crack, cocaine, any like when Bobby, what's his name? Uh, uh Bobby Bur Jack, what's the Godfather of Soul? I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. Oh my God, the Godfather of Soul. Uh, Bo uh I was gonna Brown. say Bobby. Yeah, yeah. No. Should, I'm pretty Is sure. It's Bobby I'm pretty sure it's Bobby Brown. No, it's yeah. No. There's a J no. in his name. I know who it is. I don't know why it's only James Brown. Time. James yes, Brown. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, it's not Bobby Brown. <laughs> James Brown, Godfather of Soul, when he's in that cocaine interview that he's on, where he's like, you see his go like just with his teeth, like he's like grinding his teeth in the dust during the middle, or she's asking him questions. I'm like, you got to, when you see some of these old interviews, I just sit there and go, man, like, would they be the same if they weren't taking the drugs? Like, it would they be that good? Would Charlie Sheen be as amazing as he was if he didn't come out in that interview and do like, tiger's blood or whatever the hell winning like that's that's his trademark i mean two and a half men was amazing but that's yeah. his trademark now no i understand you know what for um that kind of like uh drug use i think wrestlers were the best i remember one interview with mean gene oakland paul kogan and randy savage and those two were all pumped up on coke and they were talking about how the, the world will collide and and like you see Randy Savage doing a stupid hand thing and he's just like, he doesn't even know what the hell's going on around him. It's just bright lights in his face and he can't even really think too far ahead to be able to speak. And it was just like watching a train wreck, but the most beautiful train wreck you could ever see on TV that no one would ever figure out that they were on Coke until later on in life when they admit it. <laughs> it's crazy because like, for me, I look at it like I think they should have a developed sports league where you should be able to take drugs and just play. Like, be if you're going to do them anyway, then just put them in a separate category. Put them in a separate league and watch that. I mean, I'm not – I mean, 
pro advocating legalization of cocaine or anything, but on the aspect of like, if somebody's going to take the cocaine and they're going to play a sport against people that aren't on drugs like that, just put them in a separate category and maybe you'll stigmatize it less to the point where like, it might make sports even funner. Like if you look at Barry Bonds, instead of having him taken out of the hall of fame, just put him in a separate book or put an asterisk by his name where it's like, this guy was on drugs. Like, that's see, that's the thing though where it gets complicated because then you have Lance Armstrong. His whole bicycle thing. It wasn't that people were yep. upset that he was on the like the roids. It was they were upset that he lied about it. Like because when the documentary came out and he was telling everybody, like, no, you're a liar, he was suing people that were calling him saying that he was taking steroids. Well, yeah. I think out of like the first 36 people that placed in the uh, whatever the Tour de France that he won. All 36 and then everyone behind the, the front 36, they were all on steroids. They were all using. Shocker. So it wasn't just him. It was everyone in the line. Like if you talk to anybody back then, like I saw interviews of it, they were just talking about like, yeah, we were all using. I'm like, so then put you guys in a different league. Put you guys in. I would love to see a bunch of people on 10 speed fucking bikes going through the valleys and <laughs> wineries and all these things on crystal meth i think that would be fun as shit you know what i'm just saying like uh if you're gonna do it at least make it legal and videotape it you want to talk about reality television pick a sport right now and tell me a drug that could go with it ecstasy olympics i think that would be the best <laughs> do, you, do you think they would manage like you know how- no that's why it would be the best they'd be like, they'd be like confused halfway through they, they spin around to do shot put and they'd be like what what am i doing like why do I have a metal ball in my hand? Like, what the hell's going on? Where am yeah. I? It's like when they put the uh, gold or silver onto their neck, and then it's like, this is really heavy. It's like, <laughs> it's like yeah. you're, you're amplifying the effect of it all. Imagine um, – Watch them trip out. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> do you think well, – what could basketball be improved by? I I think uh, – I mean, we got to look at – when it comes to all sports leagues, I think we just got to look at the rules and maybe like – Instead of having so many rules, maybe take a couple away and just let it play out. You know what I mean? No, maybe instead of having fouls, screw it. Just go for it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the team goes for a fight. Well, I definitely think with some fouls, like a double dribble or a traveling one, I'm like, as long as he's not running from one side of the court to the other side of the court, I don't, I, I'm not okay. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with him traveling. Like, I don't care. If you're doing that one court to the other court, then no. But if you're like... Oh, you didn't dribble between three steps. I'm like, look, motherfucker, like I'm playing against other people that are like eight feet tall. So I would like to just be able to focus on the game and not getting elbow. My biggest fear is getting hit in the face with a basketball. I don't know if you've ever had that happen when you, you you shoot it, hits right off the ring and right into your nose or something like that. Oh my God. Dodgeball. You ever did trampoline dodgeball? Trampoline dodgeball. Oh, it's amazing. You need to try trampoline dodgeball. See, when you said that, I thought of trampoline dodgeball right away. So funny story. We were in a league and it was like a, just like a beer league, basically for trampoline uh, dodgeball. So um, I can't remember the name of the place, but there's a couple places that have trampoline uh, dodgeball. Anyways, the whistle had blown, but there's like trampolines on the side of uh, this. It's like a big cage almost. And, but on the sides, they have uh, trampolines on the sides as well as the middle. And it's all kind of like broken up into squares, right? Anyways, the ref had blown the whistle and I was already in the air and the, the size of the balls are, are like the size of your hand. And when the guy, the ref blew the whistle, I'd already let go. And it's a co-ed sport. And this poor chick, like she dropped her hands for some reason. It just went pop and like she fell back and I felt bad. And the ref was like, you didn't hear the whistle? And someone else was like, no, literally when the whistle happened, it's almost like everything went slow motion. Everybody stopped to watch this happen. <laughs> it was like a deer stuck in headlights. And for some reason, like, I don't know, like I always put my hand up, but uh, she didn't have that instinct for whatever it was worth. So she wasn't feeling too good for the rest of the night. And I felt terrible. It's that moment like, when it's like you can't even make an excuse because you know the whole world was watching you in that exact moment, right? When you threw that ball and hit her right in the face, you knew everybody was going to look at you and judge you for it. It was like, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen TikTok and I've got myself caught on it, but it's like uh, one of the the video like uh, voiceovers is like at that moment, they realized they fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that? Uh, it's it's literally legit. You could 
make that into the baseball moment when uh is it randy johnson or Rand- yeah i think it's randy johnson when he threw that fastball and killed that dove in the middle of the stage Did you see that no i didn't that's pretty intense though it looks like a fake ass like baseball commercial or advertisement thing but it's a live video you get to see like behind the pitcher's mound and he throws the ball and this dove just flies right in the middle and hits the pitch and before the dude could swing this bird just explodes right in front of everybody everybody's like oh shit what the fuck just happened and i saw this way after the game had played out so like i saw it on like the internet and i was like that's fake as shit it's like when you yeah. see the eagle pick up the baby and fly off it's like that's fake then i actually looked up the live version of when they recorded that game it's 100% real he actually started his own foundation after he killed the dove cuz everyone's like oh my god like everyone's like what like freaking out like dude you just killed a fucking dove like out of all the doves in the world you killed a dove with a fastball like you would be like pat everybody was like patting him on the back and stuff and he was all pissed off and they went to interview him they're like that was an amazing you killed a dove and he was like i don't think it's funny he goes i think it's very serious i said that's like that's one of god's creatures and that's when i was like no you're taking the fun out of it damn it it was it was a amazing pitch he started his own foundation which is nice but i'm like you literally the whole world just stopped and was like save save the doves was just like <laughs> what what just uh, it, there's no meat left or anything it just exploded into feathers and everyone's like what just happened yeah. he threw a 99 mile an hour pitch right into it it's almost like a, a magic trick you know what i mean like when you pull the rabbit out of the hat except you kill the dove in midair <laughs> so i know uh, robin williams had a joke about the um drugs and if you put them into like the sports leagues because the amount of people that were getting caught on there was a pitcher that did a no hitter on lsd and i was like i've never i've never done lsd but you pitch a no hitter and he goes oh it's a lot like this imagine the baseball person that's about to swing the the guy at bat his bat's a fucking cobra comes out with goat legs and then the catcher (laughs) the glove is a vagina and your ball is a dick and he goes Imagine that for nine fucking innings while everyone in the crowd has 12 arms and they're all screaming and doing shaman chants. He goes for 12 for 12 innings or nine innings, whatever the hell it is, baseball sports. Um, he's like, imagine if that happened and you're on LSD and you're going to take away his no hitter because he was on a drug. I was like, put that into a separate category because that's even that's a handicap. That's not even a, a, a pro thing. That's a handicap. Yeah, honestly, we should see what it looks like when every pitcher is all hopped up on coke or uh lsd i think um the olympics should have a separate league so we should have the regular olympics in your case we can have the narcotic olympics and then we can also have the enhanced olympics i'd love to see every country have all their people that are all on like growth hormones and like any kind of steroid get your guy like let's see what it looks like when people are all like growth hormoned out and let's see who wins there was no there was the one Olympics we had where Russia got caught with um all those steroids and they had to give back all those. That was the saddest thing for me. Um, I know that sounds weird me saying like because I wasn't really involved into the Olympics part of it, but I listened to a podcast with Josh Burroughs, the guy who is the gold Olympic uh, medalist for uh, America um, yeah. in wrestling. And he was talking about, he goes, when – they had to give back those medals to those people. Now imagine this, you're at the Olympics, you trained your whole fucking life to get here. Yeah. And you get second place to the a Russian guy who later you find out ends up cheating. So they come yeah. back to you and they give you the gold medal. Yeah, you feel good. You just got the gold medal, right? But a lot of the Olympians were talking about how like, it's not about just getting it later. It's about you're in front of your friends, your family, the whole world, and you're on yeah, the you number one pedestal. He goes, that feeling is gone. It's something you can't get back. And that fucking hit me. I was like, damn. I was like, that's why it needs to be in a separate league. People are going to cheat. People are going to find some way to do something. One person is. So just yeah. make it open, but put them into a different league. Like Bodybuilding is natural and unnatural. Because they know so many people are using where it's like, look, you might as well just put you in a different category. I could tell by that. That guy has a six pack on his six pack. So he's obviously using something. Just throw him in a different category. So we're not cheating anybody. Well, that and the fact, you notice he he went from a normal normal size endowment to a puppy nose. (laughs) (laughs) You know, when it comes to bodybuilding, I I don't get why we have to like, 
showcased in like a thong like or like a speedo like I why can't we just wear like boxer briefs like you know like like ufc style boxer briefs or like you know like i don't know i don't want to see that yeah i i see that's funny because everyone that i know that like does the bodybuilding thing they all talk about like how like that's the most uncomfortable part but for me i always question why do you spray tan so much like why do you turn so orange that like even like some people won't do their face they'll just leave their face normal color so it's pale like mine and then it's just straight spray tan on their chest and their body and it helps with the lighting it helps get like the the uh you know you get to see all like the lines and everything like that and you look more uh i would say defined. yeah defined yeah so i'm like i mean it makes sense but did the amount of work that goes them, into that shit i want to i want to see them spray paint like funny like why has there been anybody funny that's like <clears throat> i don't know put like an s on their chest like superman or just something goofy like i don't know i just think it'd be more uh it would, it would draw more attention more positive attention in that regard instead of like everybody doing the exact same thing you know when you said uh, dodgeball on trampolines, I was like, just look how, as a society, we're so like, we're so, we have it so easy compared to like we fast on purpose. Like that's a thing. We starve ourselves on purpose. And back in the day, it was like you need to get food and you wanted to stay away from starvation. But now we give ourselves a handicap. We're literally like, let's put ourselves through. We have to make ourselves miserable. And when you said dodgeball and trampoline. I broke my arm on a trampoline. So that just sounded oh, so miserable to me. I was like, and it <laughs> happened because we made it harder. My brother put a sprinkler under it and then I was jumping on it and it started hitting me in the eyes. And he kept like, you know, you're, it's your brother. So you're going to sit there and actually turn it into his eyes. So I'm like backing <laughs> up off the trampoline. It didn't have a net. And I like stepped off and I slipped and landed on my arm wrong. And it went into my mm-hmm. shoulder blade. So I'm like five or six. <laughs> And we're uh, at least I think we're we're still in the neighborhood, but we're like all the way at the end of the neighborhood. So I had to crawl. I army crawled all the way back to my house. And my brother the whole way was like, get up. You're faking it and kicking me because he didn't know that I actually broke my arm. He just thought I was like being over dramatic. I walk in, <laughs> walk in the house and it's like Harry Potter where his arms like rubber. And my dad saw it. He's like, oh, I just got home. Are you shitting me? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, the beauty of uh growing up in a house where we were uh, disadvantaged, we were broke. The funniest things we used to do was uh, pizza box fights. So I feel bad for the youngest brother. As soon as those pizza boxes are emptied, he would always be sitting in front of the TV, not paying attention. And we would just start coming over like a wrestling match and just start beating him. Like it was a steel chair. Be like, oh, bang. But the problem is me and my middle brother would hit him from both sides. <laughs> he wouldn't know what's happening. And we'd be kind of like deaf for a second and be like, what's going on? But uh, we didn't have a trampoline. So I guess for me, when I got older, this trampoline leak uh, came available, especially with dodgeball. I was like, this seems great. I get to hit someone in the face with a ball and jump in the air at the same time. I mean, I'm fat, but this is great. <laughs> and you get that extra whammy on it too when you jump and then throw it like the movie Dodgeball, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah. But you know what's funny is um, you would think, Like with the small balls, there's not really a lot of weight to them, right? And like they're little utility balls, basically. You would think, you know, throwing them like you'd be fine. But I found myself ripping like the tenants of my shoulder to the point where I'm like sitting out for half the game because now I've ruined my shoulder. (laughs) Like playing like only like maybe one or two games a day, like a week, like two games, maybe a week or whatever. So like the baseball, we had a baseball team that joined on and my God, it was vicious. I got a pounding that day on the back, on the face, on the side of my ear. Like, honestly, it got to a point where I just bent over. I'm like, all right, buddy, just give it to me. I know it's coming anyways. (laughs) For me, I find myself, if I'm not interested in the sport, I don't play it because in any sport, I know you can get hurt. Like I remember in eighth grade, we were playing dodgeball was just a thing just to kill time in gym class. Like. Teacher's like, all right, fuck it, and just threw a whole thing of dodgeballs for everybody just to beat the shit out of each other while he laughed maniacally. And I remember in eighth grade, this girl, I guess she like – I don't remember if she was jumping or if she was doing something, but she jumped up and someone hit her in the face as she jumped up. And she – like, I think she slipped. That's what happened. She like went to go like kind of run forward or skip or whatever, and she slipped back like that. So it looked like she jumped. And it was like – did you? are you a fan of your mom's house podcast? I haven't heard it, but it's something I'll definitely check it out. I'll say with Tom Segura, comedian. No. You know what? When it comes to Tom Segura, I'm two. I'm a two bears, one cave kind of guy. When he broke his arm, 
Yes. Okay. You know how that, how he slipped back like that? Yeah. That's what she did. And she hit her head on the gymnasium floor, like the back part of your skull. And you just heard this Ooh. whack. And I mean, it echoed through the whole gym where everybody, Ooh. like even if people that were like shooting baskets off to the side stopped and like everyone just looked like how my face is right now, where it's like, Oh my God, is she alive? It was just that la And I mean, she didn't make a noise. Her face was just open. Like it looked like she was crying, but she just, no sound was coming out. Dude, she had to get pulled out on a stretcher and go to the hospital. Yeah. Yo, that I never experienced because every time I ever got hurt in a sport, it was go to the nurse's office and then be like, lie down. I'm like, okay, fucking lie down. <laughs> I think in my school, there was no nurse. They're like, uh, here's some ice. I mean, if you really, we really need to, we'll call a paramedic, but uh, you should be all right. Just try the ice and we'll see. We'll, we'll check on you in a half hour. Put some Just back sure on sick. that shit, that, whatever yeah, yeah. That, that, that medicine is. We'll get some A535 or some tiger bomb. You'll be smelling great in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh even with pool do you can get hurt in pool when like a pool cue hits you but have you um what's the guy uh he was a famous ufc commentator he did um the movie here comes the boom with kevin james the, the bald guy you know who i'm talking about though right i know what you're talking about i can't names are the worst for me so there's a there's a thing uh, he bets somebody at a pool game. He's like, I bet you $20. You can't put that pool cue it pool ball in your mouth. The pool, little, the white ball, the scratch ball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the guy goes, okay. Puts it in his mouth. Now, what he didn't know was you, you won't can, be able to take it out. You're not able to take it out. And the only way to take it out is by breaking your breaking front teeth. teeth. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like, that's why I just, I have a, such a, like, if I'm going to play a sport, there needs to be money on the table. And I just, I have to think it through. Cause even with golf, you can get hurt. If you get hit with like a golf ball before you hear people get like oh, yeah. tumors and stuff from that. I don't know. <laughs> when it comes to logical items, I feel like some people just fail on that aspect of life. Like if someone told me to put a ball in my mouth, there's a couple of questions that are coming out of my mouth, first of all. <laughs> and I think you'd be like, why would I like, this money would have to be an extreme amount of money for me to put a scratch ball or any kind of ball for that matter in my mouth. And I don't know, I, it, it has to outweigh the risk. You know what I mean? Like if I'm going to do something jackass style, the money has to outweigh the risk. Well, when you're this a kid, it feels like you would do any of those stunts. And then as you become an adult, you become more like a bubble boy where you're, it's like, Oh, I realize that like, I can hurt myself just walking down my steps. Like your knee could go out or, you know, you could yeah. slip. I slipped on my steps the other day. Cause it just randomly like dropped in temperature, like 30 degrees. And next, you know, everything yeah. froze over. I walked out just slipped, hit my tailbone right on the step. And I was like, Ooh, this is one of those moments you just roll back inside and lay down and be like, I'm fucking done with the day. Like it's just started, but I don't want to experience any more of it. Yeah, I'm definitely out. There was actually talking about uh, front steps a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you've seen this. It went kind of viral. I know it went viral up here. There was a guy that tried to steal. Um, I think it was like an Amazon package on a, on a patio. He put out the M16. No, I seen that one. That was nuts. I don't, I don't disagree with that guy. I liked how he waited for him too. <laughs> but uh, no, it was in Brampton and the guy went to jump in his, his like, I think he had like a Honda Fit or like a uh, Toyota Yaris or whatever they are. And he backed up and there was a snow drift and he got his car stuck and the guy had time to call the police and ask him if he wanted him to dig him out. <laughs> like the guy watched the whole, yeah, you got to see this. It's hilarious. Like the guy got booked and like, you think, okay, that's my car. And like, when you're backing up, you know your car. So maybe the car was stolen. I don't know. I can't figure out how you wouldn't have figured that out real quick. Like you literally like, it was like the, the, I don't, it's like a small piece of land that both neighbors have put their uh, snow on. And this guy backs his small low riding car, like a little hatchback on it. And then his wheels are stuck and he's getting out and trying to like kick the wheels and like clear the snow away from the bottom of the car. Yeah, it was, it was the best thing I think I've seen in a long time on the internet. I think this year alone was probably the worst for snow incidences, at least that I've heard of like two major ones in Texas, like the giant freeze yeah. that's happening right now where people are out of power and stuff like that. But like there was like a 40 or 50 car pile up on that whole thing. Like people, and you watch the video of that, it's fucking horrible. 
Like it's just, yeah. and I've been in those situations where like I've hit my brakes in my car before and they just did not stop. Like they were just like, and that immediacy of like, you don't realize like how much everything is just like, you're expecting it just to work out. And then when it doesn't work out, you're like, Oh my, and you realize how powerless you are. And that's the biggest oh, yeah. fear. It's like when you get, out of your car and you lock it and you don't remember if you have your keys on you or not. It's that quick panic. That is the fucking who put that in a drug. And that was steer people away from taking drugs. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, knock on wood. I haven't had too many issues where the brakes haven't worked, thankfully, but uh, I've seen a lot of instances where people uh, wait to break too late or in your case where the brakes have just decided not to work on a highway. And that's got to be a real treat to watch, like, the realization go through. I just want to watch the realization. I don't want to see the impact. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. It's like watching people's, like, reactions and, like, watching the cogs turn. Just Wait. imagine the reality show that way. Do it's like that at that moment, they knew they were fucked. <laughs> do you not want to see somebody get hurt or do you want to see an accident, but you like hope it. nobody's hurt? I, I don't mind seeing an accident. I don't want to. I don't want to know the person. I don't want to know if they got hurt. I just want to like if it's a fantastic accident. I want to see it. That's like there was one. Thank you, thank you. I always talk about this. I was like, it's everyone is so fucking into act. Like it's like watching NASCAR. You're hoping for a crash, but you don't want anybody to be seriously hurt or killed from it. And I saw this the other day when I was driving. There was an ambulance up front everybody had their fucking head turned trying to look for a dead body. Everybody was like, fucking what happened over here? What? I, and I saw a school bus get hit by another car during this like snow that we were having and stuff. And I was like, well, thank God there were no kids on it. But imagine being that kid in like seat 13 that never sits the fuck down where the bus driver's just yelling at you. Oh, yeah. And the side of the bus just gets hit with like a, like a truck and the fucking kid hits his head on the window and sit, you'd be learning to sit. That's what my bus driver would say. You'd be learning to sit right after that. You'll never stand up again. I'm like, yeah, fucking right on that one. <laughs> Definitely learned something that day. <laughs> How hard your head can hit a window. Hey, how does it feel when you don't listen? This is like instant karma. You know what I mean? That's probably, I love watching those instant karma karma videos, you know, when people do bad stuff. I seen one recently. It was like, a, uh, I don't know if it was a chick or a dude. I, I have no idea. So the idea is, I'll paint the picture. They're coming towards an intersection. Buddy's in his lane going. And I guess someone made a left-hand turn and decided they were going to switch lanes and go in front of them. And it didn't work out for them because the person in the Camry hit that other guy's SUV. So this guy stops and slows down. He honks. And this person just proceeds to go in front of them as if nothing even happened. But they didn't know a state trooper was nearby, caught them, and then instantly the state trooper came out in front, and that's where the, the instant karma came. I love watching those instant karma videos. Or another one where a guy's crossing like a little um, crosswalk, and he's got like a dog, and he's like he's like freaking out at the guy in the driver. I guess he didn't slow or come to a stop quick enough, and it kind of like scared him. And as he's like pointing and yelling at the guy, he doesn't see the stop sign pole that he's about to hit and walks right into it. And then oh, he looks back yeah. at the guy in the car and he starts laughing and the guy in the car is laughing, but the guy is like even angrier. Yeah, he's, he, flicks, he flicks him off like, fuck you, like still trying to keep his cool. It's like, dude, you can't keep your cool at that point. You got to no. walk away. You lost it, bro. You're out. Instant karma is beautiful. I could watch instant karma all day long and not get sick of it at all. See, you know, it, 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 it gets me to a point where – I wonder, like, I understand, like, maybe something bad happened to you earlier that day, but it never ends well. I mean, karma has to be a real thing on the instant karma thing. Like, karma is definitely a real thing. You put bad energy out, you're probably going to get bad energy back. But that's why I've, I've tried my best. Like, I've never done the pay it forward thing. I've never done that because no, I've, it's never happened to me not once. So I could do it a billion times. I don't see it happening. But when it comes to being nice, like even if I'm like rushing, like we're all driving and we all get pretty intense when we drive sometimes, sure. especially when someone's going like, because when you get mad at someone that's going slower than they're supposed to, you're also feeling like you're in danger as well because of the fact of they're not going just like how we're all expecting this thing to work out like proper speed limits and everything and that can get you upset but it hits a whole new fucking level when it snows dude everyone goes like 40 miles under the speed limit i'm like this is dangerous because then everybody's riding each other then someone slams on the brakes next you know bam then everybody's colliding We're, there's there's no benefit to anyone from that you know um there was an accident i think it was last year in quebec i i, I can't i can't remember the province whatever it was in but you seen like uh, it was like a heavy snowstorm and it was like a black, like a whiteout in front. 
And there was past this whiteout was a like 50 cars all piled up and nobody could see it. So it was like, it's like you could put music in the background of the video, like a classical song or something, and be like, nah, 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 nah. and then they clear the whiteout and like, bang, bang. And everybody's getting out of the cars to clear because it just doesn't stop. Tractor trailers, bang. I love that stuff too. See, those are the kind of accents I appreciate. As long as nobody's getting hurt. I mean, obviously someone's probably not feeling too great, but I mean, what can you do? It's just one of those things. It's like a freak thing. You can't control it, you know? I found myself just makes- getting pissed off when a dude's like, watch this. Here comes a car. Here comes a car. And this car goes, and he doesn't, he's like trying to slow down, but he's hitting the ice and you start skidding into the, and he's just laughing his ass off. I'm like, hey, dick, like stand in the road and tell people to slow the fuck down. But I mean, I yeah. get it. But you got to go above and beyond on that one. Like, I just watched those videos and I'm like, I'm laughing, but also I'm still like upset that this guy's like not, he's just filming. Like he, I watched this guy film like eight different people just collide into each other and they were all like 10, 15 minutes apart. Like he was time lapsing the video and skipping to the other parts. And I'm like, yo, you have enough time just to stand there. And everyone else is like, well, hold on. I'm going to get on my cell phone and call AAA. And then like five minutes later, while they're on the phone, all right, you're, you're about to be here in 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Hangs up and just sees a fucking. And Tesla coming at him. He's like, oh, wait, slow down. And the person's like, I can't stop. I'm like, oh my God, it's a never ending chain of dumbassness. I love it. You know, I can't wait until eventually, because you just talked about Tesla. I can't wait till they have like uh like a derby, like a Tesla derby car. Imagine a whole league of computer cars just smashing into each other and seeing which one can still outlast the other ones. Just saying, no one gets hurt, go as hard as you want. But maybe like a, a like a plexiglass, a thick plexiglass shield for the fans, so it goes right up to the ceiling, and just let it let it have it, just go for it. It's going to turn into the movie Idiocracy, man. We're already doing that with our presidential elections. Are you going to hit oh. me with that derby? Come on now, got that meatloaf derby, coming out with a flamethrower. Like maybe put dummies in it. The first dummy that he- the first dummy's head that flies out the windshield loses. <laughs> do, you, do you prefer a newer car or do you prefer an older one because i just saw a video of one i think it was a couple days ago and it was like a nice mclaren like a brand new spanking one and the the seats were weird it was like being in one of those um those dr- the drag cars like the giant like one seater ones the ones that go really fast yeah. on the track and each seat on each side was like that and it was the car was separated so you couldn't actually see your passenger beside you it was a oh, whole yeah. other door system in the separate part of the car like if you were going to talk about the trunk compared to the hood and yeah. um but the floor of the car was glass like you could Ooh. see the road and i'm like i don't like that because even though i can't see it Imagine if a rock or something and it breaks that glass and your fucking feet hit your Fred Flintstoning it. Like, I don't like that yeah. idea of things. I'm, I, I don't know. So when it comes to new cars, I'm definitely a fan. I think for me, I'd love to screw around with an old car. Like I would love to see like, I don't know, a DeLorean, but I would love to have someone rip it out and make it completely electric. Just, just to say they did. You know what I mean? Like just, just screw with things. You know what I mean? See if you can make it work. Yeah, see, I want to see, I would like to see a revamp of the old classic muscle cars. I know that's like, it was out of my time period, obviously, but like, I remember uh, my great grandfather, he lived, he used to live in Baltimore and there's like this really old trailer park. And when he passed away, there was a neighbor when we were cleaning out his house and everything, his neighbor always had this car covered up, but you could tell by like the car cover that it was an old style muscle car. So I'm like, I got to know what this fucking car is, dude. So I'm like, I'm like 15, 16 years old, walk over, you know, looking around, making sure nobody's checking on me. So I'm basically, I'm trespassing a trailer park (laughs) home. So fucking as far as trespassing goes, and I just, (laughs) yeah, I just pull up the little cover, dude. It's a 1970 Chevy Impala, and that is oh, my man. fucking dream car. Out of all the cars really? it could have been, it was the one that I fucking am in love with. And I'm like like stunned where I'm not putting the cover back down. I'm just staring at it. And this woman comes out and goes, hey, kid, what are you doing? And I'm like freaking out. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was just I was curious to what was under here. And she goes, do you like the car? And I was like, I, I, can, can I pull the rest of the cover off? And then she let me pull the rest of the cover of the car off and look at this thing. Dude, she let me sit in it. She, she would have let me take a drive in it if I had my license, but I was like, yeah. I, she could tell I was so in love with this style thing. She goes, what do you like the most about this car? I'm like, besides it looking fucking badass and actually classic, like old style, that old body style I fucking love. 
there's the bench seats. I like that where you can just slide right over to the passenger part. Oh, the bench seats are nice. Hit that middle glove compartment. I'm like, look, I'd rather just have that because that is classic. I mean, if I look at the older style muscle cars, I'm in love with the aspect yeah. that they looked a lot better. Even if it's a Nova or something where like, that's not a Mustang. It's like, doesn't matter. The style that of the body chassis is amazing compared to now. I have a fucking Kia Soul. It's a fucking square. If it gets, if I get into a car accident, I'm I'm done. Like I'm getting calls every day for my car company telling me that my year Kia has been recalled for the amount of how much they explode. And I'm like, if it fucking happens, it happens. Like I I, I there's nothing I can I feel do. like you're living in a, in a real life GTA now. Hey, eh? you might as well just have like a car bomb and just <laughs> shoot it out somewhere. I'm just waiting <laughs> for that insurance money. The car explodes and you get to go and get collect that insurance money. Yeah, but I think that takes a while, and it's all like they all look at every aspect of it, and they want to make sure that you're not just because I know up here we have a lot of insurance fraud, so I'm I'm pretty positive where you're from, they're going to be checking that stuff out pretty uh, intently. I mean, I mean if obviously, if you're if not it, anywhere near the car, I was about to say if the car exploded while I was in it, just like me show up in a wheelchair with like third degree burns, be like, yep. So, what? When am <laughs> I getting my uh, paycheck here? When am I getting paid? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, <sighs> I can't insurance is one of those sticky items. I friggin' I watch how um, a lot of those business businesses or insurance companies do business. And I'm telling you, man, I don't want nothing. I I don't want nothing wrong to happen with my car. I don't want nothing to happen wrong with your car. It's just such a process and everything's like, it's almost set up in a way that everybody's automatically a liar. Like you're guilty until proven innocent. So for me, when it comes to this stuff, I really hope you have no issue with your Kia soul. I always call the Kia soul, the soulless cube. (laughs) <laughs> it looks like a soulless cube. I like the electric looking ones, but I mean, I have, to, I don't know, for some reason, electric cars, I just, I love them. I don't know what it is. I have a respect for taxes and I also have a disrespect for taxes. One okay. thing I hate about taxes is I do not like how there's a fucking death tax. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, you're still paying after you're dead. That does not make, it just becomes the burden for your family. But then also, I started to like taxes when I found out even though that little bit of money that they take out every single paycheck, it actually gets funded to like fire departments and stuff. So if you see somebody's house burned down, like, yeah, it, 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 I never even thought about it. Like, yeah, somebody's got to get paid for doing that. You know what I mean? It's not just free labor for them. They have to get paid to put the house fire out. And then, but then it goes into the aspect of home insurance. When your house yeah. burns down and everything like that, it's a long fucking process to, for you to get your money for that stuff. And even then, it's like it's not going to replace the memories. It's like that used to no. happen all the time when I was a kid. Like, I think the biggest leveler is when you used to get shocked when you used to plug something in the fucking wall. Like, kids need that shock. But it also <laughs> relates to I used to hear all the time when I was a kid, like, my mom would be like, Hey, would you like to donate something to this family? They just lost their home in a house fire. So, I, whenever I leave the house, I'm making sure the oven's off. I'm making sure everything even if i haven't used the oven in a fucking month i'm always still checking it just because i'm making sure i'm like there's nothing no power cords or anything that's left on to where it could overheat because sometimes my phone when it gets plugged into the wall all night and i'm if i'm on it for like an hour watching hulu or something my phone yeah. is hot and i'm like yeah. this is what happened when you hear all those accounts of people in movie theaters with cell phones exploding in their head and shit Oh shit! Yeah, or the S7s not being able to go on planes because they have the problem with their batteries lighting up on fire. <laughs> I never heard that one. That's intense. no, no. Actually, in Florida, I remember we were in Florida, and it was it was that phone was banned. You weren't allowed to bring that phone on the plane. Well, then how, was am, a I gonna, how am I going to play my Angry Birds if I can't bring my phone on the plane? You're going to be an Angry Bird. You're not leaving. You're not leaving the state with that phone if you're going on that plane. There's few things in society I feel like people will immediately get angry at you if you do not follow the rules. I feel like that's with some laws, but also when you're on airplanes. If someone does not turn their fucking phone off and they're like, it's a myth, you're pissed off at that person. You're like, I don't want to die. Like my life is in danger because your Wi-Fi signal has a small possibility of throwing off this airplane's navigational system and then we're all screwed. I think the only rule I think on airplanes that should not be upheld is the mile high club. I think that should be just like an okay thing. <laughs> they should have a special washroom just for smushing, like a Jersey shore kind of like smushing, you know, 
you go in there, it's like a, like a, a single person hammock where they can do like a spider over you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're when running, you're done, everybody's happy. You're running air brothel now that you're talking about. Yeah. You're like an air. See, I'm okay with that if it's on a long flight. If it's on a 12-hour yeah. flight to Hawaii, go fucking nuts. Go ravage each other in the bathroom. I don't care. But if it's on a 30-minute flight to like Atlanta or whatever the hell it is through a short little like mid-stop flight, don't you fucking dare. You do not need to get laid in that 30 minutes. You can wait. But if it's a 12-hour one, I'll give you an amendment to the clause. I'm just saying like it could be the quickie club. We can make our own like, uh, you know, it's not having like an Airbnb. Let's say someone wants to go from point A to point B and they just they need to get their stuff uh, played with or however you want to say it. And just like, you know, have a lot more instead of bathrooms, just have like a lot more of these like closet like spaces where everybody has like a little bit of light or you can turn off the light or you can have like uh, or like a painting. Room. We could have one where you're like painting each other and shit like you just got right deep, you know, little How shower. About boom. We bring back the phone booth, but instead of a phone booth, it's an anonymous sex booth where you can just go in there and have sex. Well, you got to rename it, right? If you're going to do like a Pornhub like thing, you got to call it the bang booth. More bang for your buck. <laughs> Yeah, you put your dollar in there, and then after you're done, it just sanitizes the shit out of that thing and sprays it, blow dries, and the next guy can go in there or person, people, persons, yeah, whatever. That's one thing that probably like it got. We had a major one in my town got shut down was uh, water parks, and that's all because of coronavirus. There's not going to be water parks anymore. I'm like, damn it. Oh like, man, yeah. Nothing better than taking your shirt off uncomfortably in front of everybody and waiting in a ride for an hour and a half for two minutes of fun. <laughs> so it's, it's funny. I actually have a funny story about a water park. So a couple of years ago, I was at a work function and I had a buddy, he was, he wanted to come down and I paid for him to come down. It was no big deal. So he's like, I forgot my bathing trunks. I'm like, no problem. I got you. So I had these old trunks I hadn't used. I think I used them once. And I remember when I wore them the last time, I was literally like a teenager and I realized the reason I stopped wearing them when he went down the water slide. And the reason I stopped wearing them is because they're see-through. So they were like, imagine it was like a light turquoise around the crotch area and then it's gray on the actual knees and it has like a shark's mouth. So the shark's mouth is over the growing, right? And it's open, almost like a Jaws look, right? But the problem is when he came down, you seen the, the pink tongue underneath <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't realize and we had a lot of female co-workers and he was really he wasn't even embarrassed at all actually at first he was kind of like this and he's like i don't give a fuck you can look at my shark's tongue and we like literally for the rest of the day he walked around the whole park didn't give any fucks like zero fucks whatsoever oh, <laughs> oh man God. that's okay that's okay if it's a, a woman in a white shirt or something then you're like oh that's it's cool if it's see-through but if it's a dude yeah. it's like oh my god well, I think the women might feel otherwise, but uh, I think it was just one of those moments where it's like, you know, like you put something in the back and you forget about it. And then like when it comes, like it comes out and it's like very last minute, and there's nothing you can do. You're like, just got to enjoy the moment. You know what I mean? Like that was one of those moments I just had to enjoy. I don't know if it was like instant karma. Maybe he did something and the universe was just kind of bringing it back. And it was like, you're going to show everybody your junk. Like, I don't know, <laughs> but it was a I, good moment. I used to work at a water park uh, in uh, Delaware and it's okay. called it's called jungle gyms and um i worked there for like three or four years there was one ride that we basically nicknamed the concussion because it's like one of those mat rides you know like okay. you go down the tube but you're on a mat so it's going even faster the issue yeah. wasn't the ride the issue was the end of the ride where you were supposed oh. to get off people wouldn't understand so when they they wouldn't make it the full length of the track so they would instead of getting up and stepping off to the side, they would walk down the whole fucking thing. Then you would oh. get one dude that was weighed more than a lot of the other people, and he would have so much momentum, he would go farther. So you would always hit the person in the bottom of their legs, and the person would flip back and hit their head on the on the, the fiberglass part of the slide. So we called it the concussionator because <laughs> everyone's getting concussions from it. And they're like, oh, maybe yeah. we should replace the slide or like, you, you know be more authoritative when we tell people to step off you literally will be like step off to the side and people will be like what and they would like still keep walking it's like step off. you would do the whole motion we would tell them step off to the side when they get done but i guess all the water and all the fun that you're having they're like ah i can't hear and i'm just lost all my memory so you're really going to lose your memory when that 250 pound dude goes swinging for a toddler's legs and knocks him back oh. You know, it's funny. You're talking. We're talking about water parks. So when I was a kid, we have a water park here in uh, Ontario. It's called. Uh, I think it's 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 called something different now, but it used to be called Wild Water Kingdom. 
So they had this one slide. It's called the devil's edge. And as a kid, balls before brains, no problem. It's literally like, here's a slide. Like literally, here's where you get on. And then literally, it's just straight down. So as a kid, it's no problem. So as a younger adult, when I went again, when I was in my mid 20s, this guy used to do this as a kid. This is simple. My God. So as soon as I go down, I can feel my back comes off of the slide and there's a gap and I'm kind of like beaten back and forth like a fish out of water. So by the time I got to the bottom, I wasn't even sure if I was actually going to stay on the slide or if I was going to fall off to the side. So it's funny how fear kind of like comes into you as an adult. And I would never touch that ride again because the balls before brains thing, like it's just way too much. So I am telling you right now, if they have to close a slide down, if they ever do reopen that place, it better be that fucking slide. <laughs> like to see it, it gives me fear. Like I feel like, you know, when you're going down something really fast, like if you go to a roller coaster and stuff and you have that, that rush in your nuts for a second. Yeah. I feel that every time I see that slide, it really hurts my feelings on a personal level. <laughs> it makes me, what you just said, when you feel that rush in your nuts, the first thing I thought was like, you might have testicular cancer. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, no, no. I got time for the tummy snakes to figure that out. <laughs> oh my God. John, dude, you've given me enough of your time, man. I know we didn't talk about uh, the Go Deep podcast, but what, what, where, what's it about? Where can people find it? Okay. So uh, Go Deep, we talk about everything except uh, religion and politics. We, there's enough people that talk about it. Um, we have a lot of uh, uh, personalities on the show that they, they have their niches, but they love to, we all love to talk about uh, group items like lottery and, you know, just fun, weird, wacky stuff. Um, you can find us on Google, even if you wanted to hashtag one word, go deep, the podcast, all one word. We have merchandise. We have 116 podcasts and we got more coming down the pipe. We just like to have fun. And, uh, you know, we love it when people comment and share, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever social even we're even on uh, tiktok from here uh now every now and then but uh we're just about having fun and just like letting loose you know what i mean much like yourself well i appreciate you for uh giving me your time today and i'll make sure i link everything in the description as well john uh thank you for awesome. listening to this episode of out of the blank podcast